Hey guys, welcome back to The Green Journey, a podcast about everything CBD, hemp, and cannabinoids in the industry. Today is December 3rd, 2020. We are officially in prime COVID season. And today we would like to, I guess our topic is going to be CBD and hemp products, just our experiences, the methods we've ingested them, how we feel about them, just, I guess, overall general, our experiences with products. I'm not going to go into brands today and things like that, but we're just going to give kind of a general overview. So do you guys want to introduce yourselves just in case? I'm Mike, by the way. I'm Rich. Robert. And who wants to tell us about their favorite CBD experience? Where do you start? You want to start, Rich? What do you, what do you have anything? Uh... I would say like favorite CBD experience, but like how I currently take it. I mean, I use the oils. Oils are kind of annoying sometimes when you got to measure out like, you know, um, percentages, you know, do I do a quarter of a uh, quarter of a drop? Do I do a full, you know, a full liter um, or do I do a full one? you know, trying to get those different out. Uh, traveling with oil is always a pain in the butt. Um, so, I mean, I have a mixture of, you know, edibles, oils, and uh, capsules. So just depending on like what's going on with the day, I usually start my day off at like 5 a.m. And, and I'll take it right then and there. I'll take an oil. But uh, if I'm traveling, I, I mean, I usually throw capsules in my uh, in my bag just to make it a lot easier just to get through, uh, you know, check TSA checkpoints. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of capsules do you uh, isolate? Full spec? Yeah, full spectrum. I do everything full spectrum. Um, you know, I, I haven't had a drug test in probably ten years, uh, so I don't really worry about those kind of things. Uh, you know, and I, and I deal with migraines, so if my migraines get kind of like way too crazy, I'll, I'll eat some uh, THC edibles and I'll take the trip. I'll take, I'll do the little journey down, down, the, <laughs> down, down the green road to see where that goes. Cause uh, everybody knows I, I hate it when everybody says, Oh, there's only five milligrams and there's, there might be 30 milligrams in that bad boy. So <laughs> you never know what you're getting, dude. That's, that's, that's the funny thing about, you know, edibles is it's kind of like Russian roulette. You just uh, you eat it and you kind of just like, all right, where's this thing going? Cause uh, just jump on and hold on. huh? Yeah, baby. Cause <laughs> you know, you, you get that 30, 40, 50 milligram uh, edible that, that, that says about five or 10, you're going to be riding the white lightning for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That might be a fun podcast, an edible podcast. Yeah, just eat some edibles. Just, just have a conversation, right? Yeah, I mean, I might trip y'all out. I'll just be like, Ugh. just start going <laughs> off and walking there's, around. <laughs> there's an audience for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that, that's how I take it. Uh, I'm I'm supposed to be getting some flour soon, so I can I can smoke some CBD. I've vaped CBD before. Um, you know, it's it. I, I like it all. Uh, my, my more thing is more about uh, convenience. You know, if I have time, it's it's easy to you know to measure out you know your on your dropper to to you know your your twenty five or fifty or or half of a you know dropper capsule. You travel a lot, right? Huh? You travel a lot, so you yeah, I travel. Things. So I mean, you know, with college football and. Uh, you know, just different, you know, going different parts of the country. It's just easier just to grab the pills and throw it in there to, uh, you know, you know, and it, it's, and I, and I hate to say it is because it's always that liquid, right? When you're traveling with liquid, they, they just look at you way differently. It's, uh, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's like, Hey, look what everything else is in the bag. You know, I'm not blowing the damn plane <laughs> up. Like, you know, if I got a whistle on a flag and, and, and a football uniform, like <laughs> last thing I'm doing, I'm like, just get me on a plane, man, please. Cannot be late. Another good idea that I'm not a huge proponent of this, but it works. The, it, I don't know if they have full, I'm sure they do have full spectrum, but like there's CBD gum you could travel with. You know what I mean? Then you don't have to worry about the oils and the droppers and you could just pop the gum and chew on the stuff all day long. So there's a few other alternatives. Have you tried a gum? Have you tried it? I haven't tried the gum. I mean, it, it makes... I'm very curious with that. Theoretically, it makes a ton of sense because it's going to absorb like a sublingual with all the capillaries and, you know, in your mouth, like a sublingual yeah. thing, a buccal thing. But, you know, I haven't personally tried it. So maybe Rich can be the guinea pig. 
So if there's any uh, CBD gum companies out there who would like a uh, review of their product, hit us up and uh, on Canada.Force over on Instagram, and we'll, uh, we'll have Rich uh, eat about five packs of gum at once and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> what happens. i'd be like martha stewart when she said she ate like 30 gummies and she didn't feel anything I'm like okay that means your stuff is trash <laughs> means you're just making candy that's all you're making yeah it's like <laughs> come on i eat 30 gummies of cbd or thc i my ass better be on the floor <laughs> just like, i was like, gonna ask you about the oil were you doing it like personally, I like to spread it out throughout the day because it's like maybe four. I my feelings are like a four to six hour like efficiency. Do you just take it in the morning, or are you spreading it out throughout the day, or just when you wake up, pretty much? Uh, I just do it throughout the day. Oh, well, I'll do it at first, but then like if I I if I have a a football game, I'll take it an hour before the football game, okay. and then um, uh, uh, but most of the time I just do. Um, I take it in the morning, you know, I'll take it in the morning and I'll go work out and then I'll go to work. And then by that time I'm like, so exhausted. I just pass out. There you go. Um, so yeah, but yeah, most normally like before a football game, I'll take an hour before I'll take it with my pre-workout with that kind of like sounds like an oxymoron, but uh, hmm. it's several, you know, it's not as um, the central nervous system. It won't stimulate. You know what I mean? It's not going to be as yeah. jittery or that kind of thing. Yeah. So, I mean, you get the, for the pre-workout, it's more of like you're, you're focusing and then the, the CBD just kind of helps you relax. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's awesome. a lot of people, a lot of people in uh, the work environment are actually use CBD. They just don't like it to be known. A lot of executives, it's, it's really weird. Like you talk to them, like, especially down here in Texas, like, Hey, you're like, yeah, man, I'll support you. But, uh, don't tell anybody I did this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I wish it had effects that great that I wouldn't want to talk about it, but not as some great medicinal benefits. I wouldn't say any like psychoactive. I mean, it's no, like, you're not, you're not stoned. That's the beautiful thing about like CBD, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's a lot of officials who use it. Um, a, lot, a lot of corporate executives, they just don't, uh, it's just that that whole like being in Texas and being in the South, it's, you know, people still, you know, it, it, it's retarded. I wouldn't say it's retarded, but it's like it's 2020, man. Like I'm not out here smoking a joint yeah. to uh, to relieve this stuff. Like I, I like I have pain. I have chronic pain, I have neck injuries, shoulder injuries, back injuries. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's more for that stuff. But it's, uh, you know, it, there's this whole tabloid or this uh, connotation that like, CBD is marijuana, you know, I mean, it's, I read an article the other day about uh, Oklahoma, one of the biggest red states is uh, one of the fastest THC markets in the world. Like, I love it. Like, come on, Texas, you got to get your shit together and let's do this. Why don't you know? sprinkle it down to your, to your, to your town in a little bit. Watch. What's up? So Oklahoma's going to sprinkle some stuff down to Texas. Texas watch. Well, it's, I, I have a fear that Texas is going to be the, the cannabis thing is going to be a lot like the gambling, like Oklahoma and Louisiana are going to, they're going to pay all the legislatures not to pass it because once they do, once they pass it, it, those, you know, Lake Charles are going across to Oklahoma to get, you know, THC, they're done. Like Oklahoma's done. Like Lake Charles is done. The gambling casinos are done if Texas legalizes it. Just, it's going to destroy Louisiana's economy. There's no point to go over to Louisiana. <laughs> it's really not. So that, that's my biggest thing is like you got all these lobbyists in these, uh, these, these companies, they'll pay for you not to, not to pass it. So money so talks. Right? There's a bunch of ecosystems that it's going to be affecting and some, they're all trying to save their own by not opening up doors for something else. Well, like Lake Charles is like two and a half hours from Houston. You know, and that's the only places you can go gamble around here in Houston. So everybody from Houston goes to Lake Charles. So say you, you, you know, and Galveston's an hour away and say you, you, you legalize gambling, you know, you can, ha you can have it on the water. So you can put it in Austin or you going to put it on Galveston. I mean, who wants to travel two and a half, three hours to Lake Charles, or you can just go right down an hour to, to Galveston and mm -hmm. go gamble. So 
you know, it, it's the same thing with like going to Oklahoma to go get your THC in Dallas, you know, right across Dallas is an hour from the border. You know, it's like, why yeah. would I travel? To, why would I travel to Oklahoma to go get it if I can just get it in my own state? You know, the good thing about Oklahoma that, that I like is that they opened up their licensing. So a lot of we'll just use the term like mom, pa or small, small grows stores. So many people had an opportunity to open it. Whereas here in Nevada, I wouldn't say everything, but the majority of stuff is corporate owned, big money. You must have this much liquid assets in the bank to be considered. So Oklahoma kind of did it. There's a, you know, you could be like an individual and do it. I think it's cool because like any other business, you can open any other store you want in a city, right? If it fails, it fails. You're out the money. But a lot of these places, it's harder. Yeah, Nevada, to- Nevada's got that whole history of, you know, mob influence, corporate influence, you know, pay the big, pay, pay the man, pay to play. So, I mean, what's the difference between, you know, gambling and THC? There's uh, there's not much. Exactly. So, I mean, you paid to play. That, yeah. I mean, that's exactly what it is. That's like, that's why I love Oklahoma for that fact that you have a chance as, a, as, as an individual starting a business or something. Maybe that's been your passion your whole life and you can't get into it because you don't have a, a million liquid cash and you can, you, you know, you have 10,000, but you have enough to start your storefront, your friends front, your products. So I guess we're kind of getting off topic here. But, well, not, not, not really, because you're, you're talking about different ways of, of you know, going into you know, ingesting. It's like, you know, if, if I'm a mom and pop, you and I could sit down and we can make edibles all day long in our in our kit. I wouldn't say in our kitchen, but in our shop, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, we can eat edibles and sell them. And that's our way to, to make some money. But, you know, if, uh, you know, you know, I don't have a million dollars to go buy a processor for for tinctures, right. you know, you know, it's. There's, there's different ways to make money mm-hmm. or to take them, but it's also, it's like, you know, you want the mom and pop, you know, us three guys, we could go out and we can just go, we can start selling edibles tomorrow if we wanted to, you know, it's, but, but tinctures, I mean, there's a whole process to doing that thing, you know, distill it, you know, you got to purify it, you know, how are you going to extract it and all that good stuff. It's just neat that like, let's say you're an amazing chef or baker and now you have that chance to work in the cannabis industry and yeah the same way with the the cbd the fda says you can't put it in edibles so i guess we're kind of on that topic you can uh that's another crazy thing like washington state it's not allowed in nevada it's only allowed in dispensaries it's all gray market area speaking of ways you said you had tried i guess that leads into edibles so you had tried cbd edibles before how did you like those i mean it's 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 the same thing with THC, right? So some of them, you can literally taste the CBD in it. And then some of them you're like, man, there's nothing in there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, and I'm sure like the process is getting a lot better with, with some of these companies. So if a company sits there and tells you, Hey, there's 20 milligrams of CBD in here, you know, hopefully they, they refine the tactic that it's, there's going to be 20 milligrams to be in there, but you, you know, as we've all done and sampled, we all knew we said 20 milligrams was on here and like, you didn't feel it. You're like, man, there wasn't anything in there. And then the next day you did it again. And man, you were just like super chill. You're like, well, oh, that's where the 20 milligrams went. It went all of this one. Well, that's where it comes down to. You need to homogenize and mix the products properly. And they're not because one half of the batch could have all the stuff in it. You know what I mean? And one yeah. half has nothing. So it comes down to doing it properly, but, but you know, it's, you know, each state and the government is a, uh, you know, they're making what, what sucks about each state doing it individually is like there's nothing across the board to sit there and say, hey, you know, y'all need to y'all need to. This is how y'all should do it. Or, you know, this is this is what y'all need to do. Like, I really hate saying that because I hate government involved in, in anything. But it's like, you know, it's we've all seen, you know, there's so many scammers out there on, you know, just doing anything just you know just mixing some yellow stuff together and you know throwing some dirt in it and being like hey hey rob you want some cbd i i got you know i got 100 milligrams right here for 20 bucks you want to buy this stuff <laughs> you know and you being a guy that doesn't know anything you buy it and you're like man i don't feel anything well no shit it was just yellow mixed with dirt or like the hemp oil they're like oh it's a uh, hemp extract fifty thousand milligrams in one ounce oh, yeah <laughs> Okay. Do I drink the whole thing to fill it? No. We're we'll gonna that story in a minute. <laughs> Yo, even when even it even boils down to counties. When I was out there selling, like Riverside County, and then the county next next door, they had two different regulations. 
So when I was selling uh, products, one of them was edibles to a smoke shop. He's like, oh no, the county came in and said, nothing edible is allowed. So we had to take it off the, all, all down the shelf. So I go to San Diego County or one above. Oh yeah, they're selling it like, any, like no big deal. So it even varies down to freaking counties that don't even have a, a straight line of what to do. Everyone's completely on their own. Did they, yeah. it's, did they tell you guys beforehand? Because here in Nevada, one day I go into a place and they're like, oh, we can't carry um, smokable, anything smokable CBD anymore because it has to be bought. We have to get a tobacco license first. And then we have to buy it from a company that is licensed to produce tobacco products. So they couldn't carry any more vape juice, flour. Well, you know what they're trying to do with vape right now is there has to be made by a certain manufacturer. Yeah. And are they trying to like get rid of the like, all the small dudes. I think there's a lot more laws in place and it came down to now they're saying not the juices, but remember all those kids were getting sick and like, yeah, cause the metal was burning. Yeah. The metal, yeah. the cartridges they are using cheap alloyed metals that when you heat them up, they really start in them. China, China. Yeah. And I mean, there is some you like a nice pop. little facial, right? When they pop. Yeah. And they yeah. Or someone cut the oil. I mean, there was a lot of various things, but they just realized now they're like, Oh, maybe it wasn't uh the vape it was the cartridges well, they don't know but yeah the rules are changing like you, they don't even inform the companies and then like you said rob you go on and they're like oh we can't get that because they have why isn't the state publishing these changes beforehand instead of just walking into like my friend's shop and they're like you can't carry this stuff anymore too bad you have your receipt for it they're like no we just bought the shop is all here well you have to throw it all away they're like yeah all right well i'll walk into a shop and it's in a box on the ground like oh no the uh what are they called? Uh, the inspector, health inspector came in and said, and gave us a report and took everything down and said, get rid of it. We don't sell it. Or we they have 30 to, days. Did they, did they ever like, I know like the back, like we had some stuff here in Houston and like they couldn't sell it, but then like that they knew you, they take you to the back and be like, what do you want? <laughs> it all depends on the owner. It's yeah, on the owner. They're like, yo, like we're not supposed to sell this on the bank <laughs> floor, but what do you want, man? Like, you oh, yeah. got cash? Like, all right. Cool. If they know you, if they trust you enough, yeah. Uh, Were they like, part. did they ask you if you want like a Gucci purse or maybe like some fake Supreme stuff too? Yeah, like, it's like, yo, there's, you know, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's, you know, I follow some people on Instagram and they talk about like the black market is bigger than the regular market. And it's true because, you know, it's like, I hate paying taxes just like everybody else. But like, you know, why, 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 why get charged more? For this stuff when the government's just going to take half of it yeah and they're supplying the demand so i mean oh, they say the black market's like 20 times bigger than the regular market out in california like that's wild yeah. like <laughs> that's freaking crazy during like, during well this whole COVID season they've been going crazy with flour people are just can't stock it fast enough because it's, it's been selling like hotcakes isn't that crazy yeah it, it's ah, oh, it's it that just goes to show you man no matter how many laws there's going to be somebody's always going to find a way to make a money in the back room oh yeah so it's like prohibition but with weed mm -hmm, exactly i'm a big uh big student of prohibition back then and it's exactly what's happening now with cannabis you know and if we want to we really want to get it to we can go to oregon and go smoke some crack since it's that's legal up there we can do a product review on some crack on like well, 18th, PCP, and, on eight, on 18th and, and broadway <laughs> we can tell you that's where you get the best crack rock <laughs> you can just drop acid take hair on walk around with <laughs> dragons chasing you and like it's cool like they're trying to put instead of giving arresting you now it's um and they're like, yeah, hey, they're, trying to get into programs, but they're just promoting, and we won't even go into supplying up there, but like, you're just opening up that market for more people to try stuff. Cause they're not worried now about, you know what I mean? I, I just, we'll see. It's a social Thanksgiving. experiment. So. Can't have Thanksgiving, but you can go smoke a crack rock right there on the Capitol. And, and, you'll, get a, and you'll get a free, a uh, couple of months in treatment with housing and food and stuff too. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, God bless you, Oregon. Good job, people. <laughs> what, uh, Rob, what's your favorite, uh, or what methods have you tried with CBD and hemp? And what did you prefer, not prefer? I think, I, I think I've tried uh, pretty much all of them. An edible, a tincture, 
uh, a bomb, a lotion, a bath bomb. So when you say a bath bomb, it had CBD. It's apparently it had CBD in it. Yeah. So they use uh, the the bath bombs that I've used. It's a it's an isolate CBD and a uh-huh. bath bomb will have. Did it one fizzle used, differently? What's that? Did it fizzle differently when it was like in the bathtub? No. Yeah, it kind of kind of spelled out CBD as it was fizzing out. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it, 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 the bath bomb compared to a big ass tub of water, dude. It, there was no point in CBD. So I would I, when I would sell it, I'm like, look, it's better for a foot soak than you would to to enjoy it in a bathtub. So if you're gonna do a bathtub, throw like three or four of them for the equivalency of the water. Forty dollars, you know, forty dollars a raspberry scent to get your night started. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, it was, it was always bogus. I would never sell it as like, oh, yeah, it's a soothing thing. If you are going to go in the bathtub, you're going to need at least, you know, three or four to get some kind of, you know, relief on the skin, on the surface. Um, if you're a female, it works better, right? I mean, you have more openings and mucous membranes that it will absorb in the tub. But I think a bathtub's like 80 yeah. gallons. or I don't, don't quote me on that, but it's, it's a lot of gallons in the bathtub. It's a and lot, you yeah. dilute 100 milligrams into, let's say, even 50 gallons of water. And it's sticking on the side of the tub because it's porous. It's not. Yeah. yeah. So you're not a huge, um, you didn't feel a lot of effects is what you're saying from the bath bomb. No, I, I ended up using it for like, for, for a foot soak. Yeah. That makes if sense. If I was really, yeah, if, if my, my, my feet were kind of in pain or just sore, then I would soak in it for, you know, about 20 minutes. And that's what I kind of uh, used it for. Um, the gummies I liked. Gummies were good. After like a stressful day, I'd come home and I'd pop two gummies, 20 milligrams each. Um, within an hour, I'd kind of just be a little bit more more relaxed, not, not being so snappy with the kids after a long day. Um, so, so I definitely kind of like lessened my, my, my stress a little bit. That, that's why I didn't like the gummies, though, is it takes too long to, uh, to, to kind of kick in. It. Yeah, as well as like the, like the vape or the, the oil, like instantaneously, you, you felt it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's my only thing about gummies. Like gummies, you're like, all right, man, I know it's going to hit me one of these next couple of hours, but uh, all the other <laughs> stuff. You know, one thing I wanted to ask, have y'all ever tried the dip, the CBD dip? No, I never tried that. Like can of dip? I, I don't know. Yeah. Have you? I've tried the can of dips. They make, well, they were made here in Las Vegas. They have them in Nevada too, in dispensaries. So there's a, there was a company that made it here, and they got into a little bit of a lawsuit with Canadips, and so it's no longer being produced through Canadips here, I believe. I may be off on that, but they sell it over in Europe too. But it, I, okay, so there's Canadips, and then there's CBD. There's another brand called like CBD Dip. So one of them is made like, um, well, Canadip owns both of them. They do CBD and THC. Yeah, they're in like a little packet, like a, a yeah, yeah, like, like a thick packet. Yeah. And there's another company, there's a few companies that make it with like herbs that, that simulates like a tobacco texture and stuff without fiberglass. Like you put in, you know, that kind of stuff. I've never tried that kind. I've had the can dips before and they usually have like a lemon flavor. They flavor them and they, it's like a little pouch, like a, I guess maybe Skull Bandit, I think is the name, the little pouch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you put it in, it's pretty decent effects and they have it in full spectrum too, broad spectrum. They have a different ways. It's good because the saliva sits there and it gets into your, your um, sublingually like all the time it's sitting in there. You know what I mean? So it's absorbing really pretty fast. So I think it's, a, it's a really good for like working, going out and doing yard work, construction, like roofing. A lot know? of executives liked it. Yeah. And it doesn't, you don't have to spit it out. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? You don't have to in a cup. So it's, it's a good product. It, it, it's a little costly per milligram, you know what I mean? But again, it's it's a unique product. So seventeen fifty for per can. Is that I what think it is? There was, I think there was only something like fifteen pouches in there. And they had it back in um, the Midwest. They have them at the gas stations, right? And it's yeah. only like ten dollars yeah. a tin. So you see the huge markup when you go into a specialty store versus, you know what I mean? They have it in a chain called Quick Trip, and I think I think it's around ten to twelve bucks a. Well, online, it was seventeen bucks too. Yeah. yeah. They work. I mean, obviously it's like putting oil, but it's always in your mouth. So it's absorbing all the time. So it's a yeah. nice little product. If you, some people they'll gag, you know, when they have stuff in their mouth. So. Yeah. I was actually looking into starting a brand with, 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 cause there was only one company out there that was doing it correctly. Yeah. Um, and 
they didn't have no competition. So I wanted to give them some, but then I think to, to buy the, to buy the machine was a couple million dollars. So, um, you need a big facility for that machine that makes those two. Yeah. And there, there's a few companies that jumped on that now, but I, I don't know. It's the same thing with the stigmatism of like the one that's, um, made out of herbs. I don't know what it's exactly made out, but it looks like chewing tobacco, right? And it's moist and in the dip, but again, you really want to see your kids see you putting something, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think the dips are better. The packet. I think, I think more important. I think what I, we were trying to look into a pool was to like to get the guy, like the military guy yeah. or the oil worker that uh, that's trying to get off the nicotine mm-hmm. that, that used to dip mm-hmm. a lot. You know, you give them some CBD dip or THC dip or even just a hemp dip right. and it, it, it'll slowly wean you off. Cause I mean, I, I dipped and I still have the, the urge every time I chew gum, just to throw, throw it right into the lipper. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's addicting, man. It's an addicting, it, it's more for uh, the feel of it, but uh, right. I mean, it's, it's a great way to wean people off of tobacco. Yeah. Give them, give them, give them some CBD. Cause you know, those guys, you know, they, they'll try everything, but most people, they just like the feeling of it. It's not necessarily just the, the, uh, the high or the buzz that they get from it. They just want something in between their lip and their gum. I think it takes away that anxiety too, of wanting it or need it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I think it's a great product depending on the use. It's not for everybody, obviously, but it's, it's a good, it's a, it's like putting oil under your tongue for 15 minutes straight. You're going to get a pretty good bioavailability, at least from oral products. So yeah. Yeah, I, I, my oil doesn't, doesn't last any more than a minute underneath my tongue. Yeah. After a while, I'm like, oh my God, I got to swallow this shit. <laughs> well, how do you keep it under your tongue is the weird thing. It's like, yo, it's, yeah, like, it's very it's awkward, weird. right? <laughs> like, ah, blah, blah. like I'm trying to tilt my head to like keep it under there. <laughs> You know, you're like, saliva at the same time yeah like, you're, like, sh- you're like dude you get 30 se- you get about 30 seconds tops and then it's, it's getting <laughs> yeah. swallowed you okay. know one one quick trick on that is you can add essential oils and i don't think there's an official and i, I could be 100 percent wrong here official grading system for essential oils some are like food grade this grade but i i don't think there's really anything in place on that but look for, if you're gonna look look for something that says food grade but you can put you get like the natural flavor, like oil, right? So you put a couple drops yeah. of peppermint essential oil in it, shake it up, mix it good. And that will help you. Um, it'll taste like a little bit of peppermint under your tongue, or you could use a uh, orange or you could do, if you wanted to, you know, to kill the, the taste. taste doesn't bother me. It's yeah. more about just keeping it under there. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> it, it you is. See something that drips out and you're like pushing it. Like, right. It's $20 in there. Get in there. Uh, uh, you're about right. the mist. Have y'all, have y'all seen the people who do the mystifier with it? Like Mm-mm. on your face that you breathe like, it, like the essential oil mist, like the, the room humidifier. They do it that way. I've seen it that way. Oh, the infusers or whatever they're called. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen people promote that. Um, but you know, you have to heat it up to like, I for, I'm not going to quote the temperature, but it, it's, I'll give a big range between 200 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit to, to release, to do it. Just like when you vape it in, a, in an e-nail or heat it up, you have to heat it up to a certain temperature. And I don't think picks? that works. Toothpicks? I've done the toothpicks. I did like 20 of them at once. And I didn't feel nothing. So I, I think they just spray them with a, a distillate or sometimes they'll spray it with some adhesive and like a uh, food grade. And then like some isolidonics are kind of powdery. And I was like, I just get, you know, I don't know what other Rob besides like uniques uh, you did the oils. Did you do anything? Well, you worked for a company. They had a lot of stuff. I know that like, was there any unique stuff you tried that you were like, this works. I didn't think it would. You know what I did like towards the end of my uh, my employment with them was they, they came out with their CBG line. Oh, nice. Um, but it was you know it's a full spectrum CBG and CBD line, and that one I, I enjoyed way more than the full spectrum. Um, a lot. I, I never mess with the isolate stuff. Uh, yeah. Because I, I I like prefer the the full spec. But once they came out with the C, a full spectrum CBG line, that one actually. I felt like it, it, it gave me some good relief. Like it said the anxiety a little bit, you know, more, more relaxed, more, more focused than the actual full spectrum. That was one that was a good kicker for me. I think it's a little, also, yeah. a little headier, not like in a high sense, but it, it affects a little bit more of your stimulation up there and focus. And, and it helps yeah. a lot with stomach issues. I guess people say that it, it's, it, you know, it targets specific things just like CBD targets specific things. So that's, I think that's a great combo. 
Like, yeah, my wife would take it all the time because she would have a lot of uh, a lot of stomach pains. Mm -hmm. And so whenever she had, because um, she has celiac disease, so anytime she would eat a certain type of food, she'd get uh -huh. that kind of irritation. And sure enough, CB CBG, I would give it to her in the morning and she'd be just coasting throughout the day and never have to worry about anything. So it was, it works well for me. And I, that's the one that kind of just really sticks out. Well, it's like, the, it's like the mother cannabinoid, you know, everything kind of comes from it. So, you know, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would agree on people like stomach issues and they'll take it. They like, I don't know, there's different terms what they have like, but like irritable bowel syndrome or just different. Right. And they seem to say like, it doesn't eliminate hundred percent of the problems, but they, they notice they're not using the restroom as much or they're not in pain or cramping or, and, and it's so crazy. That's what, that's oh, what I tell everybody else. Like, they're just manage. you're able to manage your, your, your condition a lot easier a lot better than not taking it and just having to deal with, you know, what do you call it? I think most people just need to figure out what work, works best with them, right? Like yeah. all three of us, like every one of us takes it something different or our, our milligrams are completely different. Like if you're listening to this, you just need to figure out what work, what, what, how does your body break down and what works best for you? Right. You know, it, it's, um, you know, whether it's a, a bath bomb or a, a tincture or a, a vape or shit, even flour. Like I can't smoke flour just because of my lungs, but uh, like it just, even when I smoked weed when I was younger, I'm like, I, I, I'd cough no matter what. Like put a bong, I'd cough. Smoke a joint, I'd cough. Hit a pipe, I'd cough. Then I'd look like the devil the rest of the day. But, uh, you know, the tinctures and the gummies, they work in capsules work best for me. You know, you can vape the flower. You can get the electronic um, vaporizers like X Vape makes one called the Aria. It's like seventy nine ninety nine. I I believe that's it. But with the with the promo code Canaforce, you actually get ten percent off, and I believe right. possibly that's still right. free shipping. But it, it's a super good product, and for the price, and you know, we're not getting anything for saying that. I, I truly believe that's a good product to the flower, like you said, the irritants with the combustion and matches and joints yeah. and pipes and stuff. When you vaporize it, you can heat it up at such a lower temperature just to release those things. I I like to tell people around 400 degrees to 420 is kind of a good, some people do lower, but that kind of gets 420 you- 420 is a great number. Yeah. And, it, and that's usually where it's at on those, but it uh, <laughs> provides more vapor, but you put your flower in there and you don't have all those irritants you know, the, the, the much smoke as you're vaporizing. So you can try, if you cough a lot or have some chronic respiratory illnesses, look for a, a good strain of flour, like some pinene or different terpenes. We'll go into that another day that, that actually help with um, bronchial stuff and breathing. So you can vaporize it too. So, but we'll get you out that flour so you can at least let us know how that, you know, maybe next week or the week after we do our podcast. Yeah, I'll, I'll try anything. It's, yeah. you know, whether, whether you like it or not, it's a, uh... You know, also too, man, it's like your comfort level, right? Like you're so used to, you know, taking it a certain way. Like I was real hesitant on taking capsules after taking the tincture for a while because I didn't know what, what how long it was going to work or, you know, if it's going to work or, you know, but, uh, you know, if you get a good product and it's just like anything else out there, like if you get the right, like tincture or the, you know, the capsule, like it's, it's, you're going to feel it. Right. It's just, you know, you got to. You got to play around with it, you know. It's in the you know what I started like using? Milligram. Yeah, with with flour, I would use a hemp wick to burn it. Yeah. Uh huh. Because I would, you know, use a lighter, but then I can I can feel the uh, the the roughness on the throat. Yeah. And but, it came across, you know, some some people like, no, try a hemp wick. It's it's smoother, and sure enough, yeah. Dude, it, it, it it's great. Yeah. It was less irritant, yeah. Because there's not the butane from the lighter and stuff too. The hemp wick, the hemp wick works really good, and you can buy it if you guys are wondering. There's big rolls on like Amazon, like 200 feet for like 13 bucks, and it's usually with beeswax, so it's slower burning. So you have to pay yep. five bucks for a little pack at your local store, but it's it's pretty cool. The one thing I was gonna say, Rich, you talked about like everybody has different, you know ways of consuming and stuff. And I think one thing we should let people know is when you start out, start with a lower number. You don't need to start out with a hundred milligrams and say, oh, it works great. If you start low and kind of taper up every week to see, is that getting more of an effect? You're not going to waste as much product and you're not going to, because it all comes down to bioavailability. Different ingestion methods work. You know, you absorb more of the, the active compound and utilize it. But I always mm -hmm. tell everybody, just, just like you're talking about the edibles, five milligrams, maybe 30, just start low because you don't know how you're going to react to it and just, you know, every week bump it up a little bit. So let's say you start at like 25 milligrams the next week, maybe bump it up to 30, then 35, you know, I, I, if you can measure it out in that small increments, then, you know, like this, yeah. this much, 
50 milligrams is the same for me as 100 milligrams. So why the hell are you taking 100? Your bottle lasts you twice as long, you know, at the 50. So it's like you're, uh, they, you know, got some package in, I'll try it. And, you know, you wean yourself off of it so you can give like a true, like, yeah. uh, like a true, you know, testimony. And man, I, I was off of it for two weeks and then I took this 1800 milligram, man. And I felt like I was high as shit. I was so relaxed. I was just like, man, this is great. You know, <laughs> I was so used to taking a higher doses with, with, with another product that, uh, that I was like, damn, man, was that stuff really horrible or was, is this stuff just that good? So that's what yeah. I said. Rob, did the same thing. You, you were going around to stores, right? So did people, this is a question they always give in stores to the salespeople. Can I have some samples of that stuff to try? Can I have some sam Like they're taking CBD all day long. It's not going to make any damn difference. And they and uh, these stores aren't getting that. If you give out 25 samples a day, 25 bottles a day, and let's say that's a $50 bottle, you're giving out, you know, over $1,000. There's no way they can tell. If, it, if you're an avid user, you know what I mean? You're not going to be able to be like, oh, well, that oil worked 10 times better. Like, did you encounter that kind of stuff with the stores? Like, what can I get free? Uh, I got all the time all the time but I'm like the sample is only enough for one or two servings it's not enough to really get a good feel of the whole product you know if it was a full and if you're gonna do the sample packets make sure you read on how to do the samples and don't do like i did and take all the samples all at once <laughs> or, or do. It's supposed to be a five-day serving not a one day <laughs> that was like the greatest mexican food joint ever after he <laughs> <laughs> one time I was at one of the trade shows and I was talking Bevan, who's not here today. He was preoccupied, but I was walking around and doing some, um, just hopping out, just filming the trade show, you know, showing the, the can, people online and like, here's what a real trade show looks like. And I did the thousand milligram challenge. So I was trying to find samples and at the trade shows, it's different because they have stuff for you to try out and, and candies. So I did like the thousand, I think I got up to like 500 milligrams, but I felt so sick because there was always gummies. There's all sugar like <laughs> for the things. Like yeah. I 50 gummies or something. I was like, uh. <laughs> but I didn't feel like, you know what I mean? It's not like taking a huge dosage of CBD. Like, like Rich said, it's going to relax you and that kind of stuff, but you're not going to be like not able to function or, or anything. You maybe get a little, well, you could probably do the thousand milligram if yeah. you're just doing tinctures, but if you're doing gummies, it's like, you get tired, you get tired of eating the stuff, man. You're just like, man, like, I don't want all that sugar in me. Yeah, and that's what I wouldn't push with the art with the old company is I wouldn't push the gummies just because it was. Hey, I'll be right drink. back. I got to take this phone call. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gummies for me, if it wasn't like a natural gummy, with all, without the artificial flavoring and all that coloring. Yeah. I would, I would, I would be, be cool about it, but it wasn't. It was you know red dye forty and all these other things that, for me, it was like, well, what's the purpose of having CBD when you have a gummy that's just full of. Yeah, like red number five or whatever the numbers are. And they and a lot of yeah. things, people don't know that, but a lot of people are, are get headaches and are allergic to some of those approved food coloring. So yep, yep. not good. And, and so I was, I was because I was in that market, it was it was a wellness, it's a wellness market. So for me, it was like, hey, I'm not I'm not a, a doctor, but I am giving products that are for your health. So if I'm gonna be selling you a gummy, it better be a gummy worth not increasing your sugar intake or, you know, if you're diabetic or whatever, you know, insulin is right. whatever that case is. I can't be like, yeah, this is a great product for you because it, it may, or may not be, you have may, may interact with me different. So I was always very cautious as to how I would promote certain products and how I would take it. Even my own family, you know, it'd be, it could be kind of, kind of, kind of intuitive, kind of active if it's not working for what it needs to be. And it's giving you mm -hmm. another issue. You know, a lot of things people don't talk about. I don't know if you guys talked about this on I miss, but um, cannabidiol or CBD interaction with, with pharmaceutical drugs, just like grapefruit has stuff, your cytochrome 450 enzyme, it can intensify. We have a lot of um, elderly people on pain management medications, more so like yeah. opiates and stuff, and it intensifies it. And they don't understand, like, the CBD got me high, I'm like, no, your pills are just working like 25 to 50% more efficiently <laughs> and you feel really, uh, you feel really good right now. And then the run, you know, so people don't take that into consideration. So it's still like the wild west in the market. We see a lot of the companies going under, but was there any other problem? Yeah, yeah. It'd be very cool. Cause what, what my health company started doing is they started selling a little, a sample kit. Oh, nice. So it'd have all the little, all the, um, 
all maybe like five or six products in the mini form, but then in assemble form, but it would be, you know, a little packet that you could buy. And then it gives you an opportunity to try, you know, a gummy, a couple gummies, a, a little tincture, a cream, and then like a, the capsules. But it was, it was a good little, little thought where it's like, or a good little product where it's like, oh, you can sample a little bit without having to spend 50, $60 on a tincture, another $40 on a gummy, and then, you know, another $40 on a, on a, on a bomb. Um, so that was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, that, that, that's a good little little uh, creation where you have an opportunity to try a, a, an array of products with one purchase. That's a great idea. What works best. Some people, maybe their stomachs don't digest like a capsule as well or their liver, you know, something. And they're like, yeah, it really yeah. didn't work. But that oil worked great. Or, you know, and I'm not 100% against gummies. You're right. It would be nice if everybody tried to make stuff in a more helpful manner. But that's the only way you can get in your CBD to let's say so right. very picky eater and you're getting two grams of sugar or something. So be it. You're probably eating an Oreo throughout the day or your kids, you know, Halloween candy. So I don't want to hear like, Oh, I ate a gummy and I'm going to turn diabetic. Probably not the case, but I, I did an event at a gym and I was promoting the, the products as they were selling it there. And, um, uh, and so a lot of the guys would come up and then they're like, Oh, you got gummies. You got, let me take a gummy. I'm like, Oh yeah. Aren't you worried about your, your macros? He's like, I'm going to burn this gummy in the next 30 minutes in this workout. I'm just, I just want the CBD. I don't even care about the sugar. It'll be gone before I even walk out of the gym. Right. So if you're active, that's, that's nothing compared to what you're going to be doing if you're you know, getting natural benefits of CBD. Right. So I guess the products, I'll just say real quick, because I think our recording time is going to end here shortly. But uh, I prefer smokable CBD products. Um, just for the fact of the bioavailability is just I'm good. laughing because we have three different people who enjoy three different ways. Yeah, this is so true. <laughs> I mean, I, I take oils every day. I absolutely do. And I'll take an oil at night before using a smokable product. And I try to spread it out throughout the day so it stays in the system. But the bioavailability is so different in an oil versus a um, smokable product. And I'm not a huge flower smoker when I do smoke the flower. I have noticed if I'm stressed out or this or that, and I will go like smoke a pre-roll or the flower or vape it. Um, the stress instantly goes away. You know, I'm not like, uh, like I can't get up off the couch or something, but the stress to, in my opinion, in my body, it goes away. What I really love is like the concentrates because they hit so hard. And so mm. I don't not get high kind of hard way, but it, it's just, you get that effect you're utilizing, you know, 20 to 40% or what everybody has a different number. I don't think it's ever been proven which way, but we're all different inside but even smoking cbd isolate you talked about cbg i love um like using a cbg isolate and you can heat it up with like a, a electric nail a vaporizer there's all kinds of ways you know to ingest it maybe we can do another show on that like different ways we've ingested it. so i i love the concentrates the flower that kind of stuff i feel and you do get it right into your lungs so you do feel much more effect but for long lasting effect throughout the night, oils are amazing because they're going to last six to eight hours or four to eight yeah. hours, depending. I I don't really buy the gummies anymore after like my trade show experience of trying to do, you know, the thousand mil. I just can't. <laughs> it's like taking, you know, in college, that wrong alcohol and you never want it again. It, it was just, <laughs> I will say the other day, I told you Fireball. guys. Fireball. Yeah, right. <laughs> Back then in the day, it was like the mind probe with the 151 and the egg yolk and like, but that's a whole other topic, but. Um, nano CBD, the oils. <laughs> the other day I did a little experiment. And I think what did I say, five droppers. So it wasn't a lot, like yeah. five milliliters. I did the five milliliters of the nano CBD. And what people don't get is nanos made. There's a chemical added in a process to, to nano emulsify stuff. And dude, I felt sick as hell. Like I've had it before with like one dropper. It's like a, as a drink drop or something. And I was, and I'm not a huge proponent of the nano CBD. That's just me, but I felt so sick. And that's like five milliliters. I'm like, there's no way it's a coconut oil because I make like keto coffee or, or whatever with the co so coconut oil doesn't bother me, but or MCT oil. But I felt super sick, and I don't know if it's just that company using maybe something, you know, different chemical to manufacture or whatnot. But I'm not a huge proponent. And the other time I tried it um, at a shop this guy has, and he's like, try it. My head started tingling like 30 seconds later. I'm like, he's like, that's a CBD. I'm like, no, I don't think so, <laughs> like, <laughs> No. So I'm not, you know, I, I think the oils are great for all day usage. I think Rich brought up the, the, the dip type can of dips and those kind of products are awesome because you can walk around with those and they, you know, all the time. Um, there's kind of a use for everything. Bath yeah. bombs, 
I'm not going to recommend like maybe as the foot soak, like you said, but we all know, like everybody in the industry knows it's kind of the running joke. Like you can make money off a of bath bomb, right? Or, you know, what's even oh, better. Yeah. But, the, yeah. but, but the big thing, you know, we've all, we talk about this all the time is you can pretty much slap CBD on any product right. and somebody will buy it. Like, you know, the, the, the pillow, the bed, you know, the, uh, the hairbrush, yeah. you know, it's like the yoga it, pants yeah. and the sports bra, you know, it, like for guys or people who, who've been around you know, <laughs> something about the industry, I'm not the most professional guy and I don't know everything about it, but like when I see somebody sitting there selling a CBD pillow, I'm like, WTF dude, like what is really going on here? And like, who, who did you scam? Because to me that, that dude deserves a beat down for scr- scamming grandma and grandpa or anybody who doesn't know anything and they just want to feel better. And you just sold them a three hundred dollar pillow, and you're like, "Dude, this thing is worth junk." But you know what they do? Here's here's what I think they do is the trick in some of these companies. We won't say names, but people can probably figure it out. Yeah, uh, if you get like, for example, a new bed or a new pillow, the new mattress is always going to feel good. So your third, not always, but you know, like a nice memory foam pillow, it's going to be nice because it's new. You've had your own for thirty years. You're like, "Oh, we need a new pillow. Let's invest in this." You're gonna have it's going to be great for thirty days because it's new, it's fluffy or it's firm, whatever one you get, and like. So of course you're gonna be like, oh, that was great. I slept so much better. You know what I mean? When you switch pillows and it's not the, yeah, there's a lot of. Now, now, now if they offered a, a pillow or a, a blanket and, you know, and the mist just came out of it because, you know, it's, you know, the CBD is just built in there and, you know, you just have it all just formulating around your head. Right. Then we can start talking, but you know, that's probably like 2050 where they can actually get that technology out. No, no, no. They got nebulizers and they have breathing treatments you can put in in a mask and you can inhale it. And they have yeah, but I'm talking about laying on a pillow and oh, that stuff just start, yeah, it just goes all <laughs> around. You know? Space Odyssey 2050, baby. That's what we'll be doing. <laughs> Breathing in CBD while we're going to Mars. I was watching a space show last night. Like they're doing the, um, what do you call it? When you're out on the space station, International Space Station, and they're doing like work or walking around, they're clipped in. Dude, I should have took CBD because I had so much anxiety just watching. I'm like, because you could see the earth and you're just like, if you even get anxiety in an airplane, you know what I mean? Or heights or anything. Like, exactly. I found that stuff cool. I'm like, sign me up. Oh, it's cool as hell, but. I was just like looking down, Ooh. like, it, where's it gonna oh. fall? <laughs> what happens if the line breaks? I'm, I'm sure their their safety precautions are tethered into like three different places. But the, I'm surprised. I bet you they're on the it's NASA. It's like Armageddon. You got a backup plan to the backup plan to the backup plan. So maybe there's a mm-hmm. uh, NASA CBD. I don't know. Maybe they put that up there for them. They have space ice cream and freeze dried stuff. I'm pretty sure they've grown weed in the space center station. Yeah. You see if they can grow it on Mars. What we should do is a marketing gimmick as a, I mean, I mean, not gimmick, I mean, strat- strategy <laughs> where people that are watching those, uh, those live events, Hey, we'll sell you some CBD for your anxiety while you watch this guy work on space. It's like yeah. watching that movie, right? With Sandra, was it Sandra? Oh, you Gravity? Know, yeah. I watched that on the big screen. I'm just like, it'd probably be fun in Oregon. You could take all kinds of fun stuff nowadays and just watch the movie and it'd be a 4d immersion, but yeah like the Pink Floyd experience at the IMAX, drop some acid and just go watch the Pink Floyd experience. And you're like, whoa. I, I was thinking about that. It's Sgt. Pepper's only heart, a car club band, just putting that one on replay. I was reading an article the other day that the uh, Marine Corps has a problem with LSD. Too many grunts are taking LSD right now because they used to not test for it. <laughs> <laughs> Until that's... We have a major LSD problem in the military right now. I'm like, no shit. But you can't have CBD, right? Like, or now, yeah, maybe, yeah there's some rules on it. But what happens when you go to war for 20 years? People are tired, man. Mm-hmm. So, it's a whole another another podcast. Oh, it is. Uh, yeah, we can get some get some of my buddies on here and we can talk about it. But uh, I think that. All right, man. Well, I think we we've talked about. Every which way we could possibly take this, uh, you know, and, and as far as like, you know, people who are actually listening to this, you know, you know, we're three different people and we've all tried three di- uh, all the ways we, we like, right. you need to figure out what you like and how your body actually works. Um, you know, and as, 
as Mike said, you know, start off with a, a, a smaller dosage and uh, work your way up. You know, you, you can easily afford 50 to a hundred dollars and you don't need to blow $400 on, on, on some CBD. You uh, try it out with the, the 50 to a hundred dollar one and see, see, if, you know, if you can work, you know, micro dosing, you know, do your homework on it, what micro dosing is and how it works. And, uh, you know, we'll see you on the next podcast. Yeah. And we're going to try to get some sponsors over at canaforce.org. Um, they're trying to move it over to a faster server right now, but there are some businesses that are going to be offering specials. So for you guys who haven't tried CBD or want to try some new brands or new methods of ingestion, there's going to be some, some special deals over there. So I'll just, I'll let Robert end it. I just had a couple quick things. So I was going to say with oils, my personal opinion is I think they were great. Hold them under your tongue for 60 seconds to probably about 90 seconds to 120 seconds. So 60 to 120. But, um, I'm a firm believer in dosing that three times a day, just like if you were to split up your vitamin regimen to morning, you know, midday and, and nighttime, because it does last a while. I think smoking, vaporizing, that kind of stuff gets it in your system immediately and you're going to feel that. And I think edibles, capsules, all that stuff works great too. It's just not as, um, as quick as an onset. So don't expect it. Like if you were like a THC user or, or you're used to taking like a pain medication or something, it's not going to kick in like immediately, like some of that stuff, it, it's going to, it's going to take a little bit of time. You don't know it. Yeah. You'll feel it. And you're going to feel relaxed. You're not going to get high. You're not going to do this or that, but there's a lot of different methods we didn't even talk about, but those are just kind of some of the basics. So back to you, Robert. Yeah. I mean, um, one thing I like to do is it's a double up. So I I'll do a, a tincture with the, with the, with the cream or a lotion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I so if I have like a skin irritation or something like that, I'll, I'll quickly throw on you know, a cream or a balm and do a tincture. This way I can get both within the bloodstream and the skin. Uh, and that's, for me, it feels like it, it works way, uh, way more efficient and more and more effective. Um, but there's different ways of, of, of taking CBD. It's just finding the right dosages, like you said. It's a quick question for you. Have you, have you found a company that can, that, that, that's dialed in with the tincture and the lotion. Cause I have not, ne- I have not found one company that's really good at doing a tincture that is really mm-hmm. good at doing a lotion. Like I have, I have the lotions as well, but it's not the same brand that I use my tincture on. Do you, I, I have it, but what I've, what, so Popple and Barkley, I really like that brand and they have, it's a very specific, um, um, products that they that they not necessarily combine um but i, I, I thought i seen some marketing where they promote different products within like a group a package yeah. i don't know if it's because with they've worked well together or they just promote it as a package but um check into papa and barkley their 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 stuff is, is i haven't tried their products but i've come across a lot of their branding and a lot of their their uh, marketing material and they're really good at kind of giving you, informing you about all their stuff. So try them, um, see what yeah, they, I just, see I, just, I just haven't found a company that's really good at, at, at the tinctures or, or the, the capsules. And then the their, topicals. Their, their topicals are just, they're garbage. And then on the other hand, I, I found some companies that are, their topicals are amazing, but their tinctures are just, bleh. You know, it's like, okay, well, it's like, it, but then it comes down to it. They know what they're good at, but they're just trying to, they're trying to get into the other lane, but they're really good at one thing. I have a company that sponsors Canaforce and I'll send you guys out or I'll talk to them. Um, see what we can get that makes both a really good topical and oil. And until you try it, I don't want to throw out the name because we will get the, your, all our three of our honest opinions on it. One of the, the next shows. So there's one. Okay. But um, I'll get that out to you guys or well, I'll get it and then I'll mail it out to you guys because I don't want to give out your addresses because you never know what your neighbors see coming in the mail. They got that P.O. box. So you can always mail it to the P.O. box. So. I'll, I'll reach out to them and get, get some of this stuff for you guys to sample because when you get that like black plastic envelope in the mail, it kind of looks a little suspicious. So I'll kind of repackage it so it looks, you know, like Amazon for you. Yeah. Put some put some Christmas wrap around it, you know. Speaking Christmas of that, look at Rich is ready to roll back there for the holidays. Look at all that wrapping paper. Oh, there's yeah. that from last year. I haven't. <laughs> uh, I haven't. Uh, we redecorated the house, like we redid the house, the bathrooms, and the downstairs. And this is kind of one of the storage rooms, so I haven't. Uh, I haven't. The right moved time of year. Huh? The right time of year for that to be out. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Christmas is going to be awesome, man. Thanksgiving was awesome. Christmas is going to be awesome. So You can make it even more awesome with CBD and cannabinoid products. Yeah, just don't <laughs> burn the house down. Yep, and don't eat too much. Yeah, shit. Dessert. Give it to Santa Claus. <laughs> Run a fat joint, give it to Santa Claus. So we're going to we're gonna end this here. We'll see you guys next week. I don't know what our topic will be. If you have any topics you want to hear, write in, let us know, either over at canaforce.org um, or canna.force on Instagram. Um, or even in the comments. Yeah, actually, this goes up on YouTube, doesn't it? So leave it in the comments. Yeah. If there's something you want us to try out or there's a topic you want us to discuss, if there's something science-y, if we don't have an answer, we can definitely get to somebody in the industry who does. Um, anything you guys want to know, just let us know. It makes our jobs easier. We don't have to brainstorm as much. So we're, we're here to kind of, uh, I want to use that word. We're here Educate to- Educate and have fun. Yeah, that's a much better choice of words than I was going to use. So, <laughs> all right, we'll see you guys uh, on the green journey. Thanks guys. Thank you guys.